Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about tongue drum tuning. Now I've gotten several questions recently on some of my tongue drum videos where people have asked about tuning, is my drum in tune, how do I know, what should it be tuned to, different questions like that. And so it seems to be coming up and I thought this video might help. Now, first of all, I'm gonna to try to keep this video high level. I could go into the theory behind, you know, musical scales and how they work and all of that, and then that would make this video much, much longer. But I figured if you're interested in that, there's plenty of videos out there about how music scales work, what's the difference between a minor and a major scale and all of that. So you can watch that, you can do a search for that and watch that if you're interested. I'm gonna basically assume that you either know that or that it's not important for the sake of this conversation. But what I wanna talk about is really you know, there's all kinds of different tongue drums out there and all kinds of different scales. And how do I know what scale that my drum is in? And then if it's out of tune, how do I make it in tune? That's basically what I'm gonna talk about today. So first things first, you need to know what scale your, tr your tongue drum is supposed to be in. So for instance, I've got a few back here. This is a uh, Aklot steel tongue drum. These you can find them on Amazon. They're fairly inexpensive. And this one is tuned in a C major scale. Um, so that means C major scale has seven notes. They are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So that means that those are the notes that these tongues are tuned to. Now there's 11 tones on this drum. So that does, there's seven notes, but there's 11 tongues. So some of the notes are repeated more than once. And if you look, they do have the numbers on here. Um, so you can see some of the numbers you might see more than once on various tongues. Um, and that, that's all normal. That's not unusual. That's not weird. That is normal. Um, but this is a seven tone scale. Now to tell you the truth, I actually prefer a five tone scale. This one, I've actually wrote some of the notes on there to help me kind of find the reference points. But this one has nine tongues, but it only has five notes. So um, A and then here, so this is a high A. And then we have a lower A. We have a higher, a lower G and a higher G. So again, not unusual. Um, I tend to prefer the ones that have five tone scales um, simply because your catchy melodies, if you just look through history, your catchy melodies tend to have less notes in them. Because if I come up here, let me grab this one. So if I play something like, I mean, that sounds fine, but there's a lot of notes going on there. That melody is kind of hard for your, your mind to latch onto. But if I play something a lot more simple, like. I'm only using for the tongues and your mind can catch that melody a lot quicker. So having more notes is not necessarily an advantage, though it may be more flexible um, in different situations. Additionally, as I mentioned, this one has 11 tongues. This is a larger drum. You can see the size there. It's gonna be hard to hold all these up, but it is a larger drum and it has less tongues. Well, again, you know, it's all relative. The, having more tongues is going to make the tongues closer together. And then you get, sometimes you'll get some harmonic distortion where when I hit this one, I'm actually getting a little bit of this note and this note with it, particularly if I hit it you know, kind of hard. And so it's actually resonating more than one note at a time. If we space the notes out a little bit, like on a drum like this, when I hit that note, I just get that note. And I did a separate video comparing, you know, a lower end drum and a higher end drum, if you want to hear that. Now, what I'm not trying to tell you guys, I'm not saying that the mass produced drums are terrible quality, not at all what I'm saying. I think they are great, great things to get people um, into tongue drums and whatnot. But I mean, there's a reason that an expensive drum costs more and it's because, you know, they generally spend more time thinking of the layout and spreading the notes out and things like that. So don't get too hung up on how many notes are on your drum or how many tongues are on your drum because chances are with most melodies, you're only gonna use a few tongues anyway. So this particular drum, is in right here, this one that I'm holding is in an E minor pentatonic, okay? And um, I know that because the documentation says that. Now, no matter what type of drum you have, somewhere in its documentation, it probably tells what key it's supposed to be in. This one over here is in a C major. So I, I can then figure out what notes are in that scale. Now, if you really don't know and you don't find it, there's a way to figure it out and I'll tell you that in just a minute. But so here's the thing, if this is 
in a E minor, E minor pentatonic scale, and I don't know what notes are in there, I don't need to. I can simply go to a search engine and type what notes are in E minor pentatonic scale, and it's going to tell me that the notes are E, G, A, B, and D. So it's not something where I have to know all the music theory behind it, but I can just tell, okay, so then I could hit each one and I could use a tuner, like, you know, here's a fairly inexpensive one. You can get at any guitar store. I think these are about 20 bucks. Here's a clip on one that's about 30 bucks. Or if you don't have a tuner like that, you can download an app. There's all kinds of tuner apps that you can download on your phone. They'll use the microphone on your phone that are free. So you just need something to tune it and then you can figure out what tongue is, you know, is tuned to what key. Now one other, or what note, excuse me. Now one other thing I should mention, there are some drums that may be tuned in 432 hertz as opposed to 440 hertz. 440 hertz is the standard that's used in most musical instruments, but there are occasional musical instruments that you'll find tuned in 432. In fact, this one right here is tuned in 432. So I would need to adjust the tuner to a 432 reference point. Now, again, I don't wanna go into that rabbit hole, guys. There's plenty of information. If you're curious, just do a search for 440 versus 432. Lots of information out there about it and what the advantages and disadvantages are. Not gonna go into that here, but chances are your drum is probably in 440 hertz. So let's say that I went through, and I know that this one's a C major scale, but let's say that I didn't know that, and let's say it wasn't a C major scale. Let's say I went through and I just figured out what all the notes were with my tuner. So I can type into any search engine what scale contains D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C, and I'm going to get back that that is a D major scale. So if that was the case, then this drum would be in a D major scale. So it's very easy. So that's the first thing is you need to figure out what scale is your drum supposed to be in. Then the next thing is, uh, especially with these mass produced drums, sometimes they're a little off and uh, you may need to tune the drum if you're going to play it with other instruments. Now, if you're just playing it by itself, if it's just something you wanna sit around and play for fun and it's in tune with itself, then who cares if it's not in tune with other instruments? It's not gonna be a big deal because if you sit there just playing it by itself, it's gonna sound good to you and that's what's important. But if you're planning to play that drum with other instruments, maybe you wanna play it with guitar, or you wanna record it and some of the other things that you're doing, or you, know, you have um, some other musicians you wanna play with, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that drum is in tune to the actual reference pitch. Now, I wanna show you something here, guys. I'm gonna get up close here. And if you look at these tongues, you can tell this is a mass-produced drum because look at how clean all of these are, right? Everything, all those cuts are really clean. And again, you might say, oh, that's high quality. But a high quality drum is going to look like this. So if I get up there on those tongues, you can probably just see that there are some little cut marks on every tongue. And that tells you that this drum was hand tuned. So somebody went through there and tuned each tongue individually. And typically on your higher end drums, you're going to see that. Typically seeing something more like this is a, is a um, it's a indicator of a mass produced drum. And again, I'm not saying these can't sound good or that they're terrible quality, not at all. These are great, but, but typically when you get into the more expensive drums, they're gonna spend more time on the tuning and you're gonna see individual tuning marks on each tongue. Now, this drum, for instance, I've put it on a tuner and it's a little sharp across the scale. Now, if I wanted to tune it so it was perfect, I could go in there and I could take a little hacksaw and I could insert it into that little groove and I could make this tongue, so this is a little sharp, if I made it just a little bit longer, it's gonna go deeper. And then a little bit longer yet, and it's gonna go deeper. And so I could make just a couple little scrapes with a hacksaw and then try it again on my tuner and then a couple more and try it again until I get it just perfect. Now that is the way you traditionally tune a, a tongue drum is exactly that. Um, now if you go too far and you make it to where the note is flat, you can't really put the metal back. So then what you have to do is come up here on the top side of the tongue and you'd have to actually file it down just a little bit to make the tongue just slightly shorter. But I think where you can see where I'm going here, guys, if you look at like a short tongue like this, that's gonna be a higher pitch than a long tongue like this. So if you make them just even a little bit longer or shorter, shorter by meaning shorting it this way, or longer by making the groove longer, you're gonna change the pitch of that tongue. So if you really wanna tune a drum, 
a tongue drum, the only way to really do it right is to get out your hacksaw and your tuner and sit there and spend a lot of time tuning it. And what you're gonna end up with when you're done is something that resembles this. But again, if you're really concerned about tuning, that might be a good case to buy a more expensive drum like the Vibe Drum or an Idio Pan or something like that that's a little more expensive than some of these mass-produced ones um, if that's what you're looking for. So if you're planning to play with other musicians and, and, and play along and maybe use it in recording or whatever, you might want something like this. Now I should also mention that there is techniques that will allow you to tune a drum with magnets. And one of the channels I follow, Musical Molly Khan, she recently did a video on that. So rather than we re-explain that, I'm just gonna link it below so you can watch that if you want. But she talked about a way where you can take some little magnets, little bitty magnets, and actually put them on the tongue. And what it will do is it will cause the tongue to be just a little bit heavier because of the magnet and it will, it will uh, ring at a lower pitch. And so if you put the magnet here and then you slide it more towards the center, you could actually make the note deeper or um, higher just by sliding the magnet around. Now, this particular drum, if I take this magnet, this is just a standard refrigerator magnet. It is, it's probably gonna be hard for you to tell, but I can feel that it's, it's this drum is definitely magnetic. It's got a little bit of a magnetic quality. This particular drum, if I go in there with the magnet, no stick at all. So not all metals are magnetic, but then again, this is not my area guys, so I'm not gonna try to act like I'm an expert, but different types of magnets stick to different type of metals too. So there's, you know, ceramic magnets and neodymium magnets and all of that. And I don't know the differences, that's not my area, but some magnets may work on different types of metals, some may not. So that technique may or may not work for you. Another thing you need to keep in mind is if you tune the drum perfect with magnets and you get it just perfect and you throw it, in your car and take it out to the woods to play it and it bounces around in the car, those magnets could move or could fall off and then you're back to the same problem again. So if you really wanna tune it permanently, you gotta go the hacksaw route. That's really the only way to tune a steel tongue drum. But uh, the important things to realize, first of all, you need to know what key, what scale your drum is supposed to be in. Then you need to actually get a tuner, whether it be a hardware tuner, like one of these or a tuning app and you need to actually see how close it is or if it's out, maybe it's just out on one note or maybe it's out across the entire scale. And if it's only out on, on one note, that's where you might actually wanna go in and tune that note. But if it's out across the whole scale and you don't plan on playing with other musicians, leave it, it should be fine. Um, if it's out inconsistently where some notes are a lot further off than others, then you might wanna do some tuning. I mean, it's just gonna be up to you. Or you might just reevaluate and say, hey, that's too much work to tune all that instead of buying an inexpensive drum and tuning it, I'll just go out and buy a more expensive drum like the Vibe Drum or an Idio Pan or something like that that probably has better tuning out of the factory. Okay guys, so there you have it. That was a quick video on tongue drum tuning. Again, this is a very deep rabbit hole and I didn't want to get too far in so I kind of stayed up near the surface. Um, but that's the basics. You need to figure out what key your drum is in and then figure out how far off it is and then figure out if it makes a difference to you because it might not. Um, but if it does, then you can tune it either with magnets or with the hacksaw method. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like what I do on this channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.